Hello there, welcome to a brand new show here on FCUM TV. It's an online monthly televisual treat, honestly, dedicated to FC United of Manchester. I'm your host, Andrew Lindsay. Later in the show, we will take you to Moston to see how plans are developing for the new ground. Before all that, the big kickoff to the brand new season of NPL action, and that is what the kids are all calling it. I'm joined in the studio this month by Swampy from FCUM Radio and FCTV commentator Roy Williamson. More from the boys very shortly. First, the opening weekend of a brand new season. For FC United supporters, all roads led to Nottinghamshire, unless they went the wrong way or just got on the train, and a tough task at Worksop Town. In the corresponding fixture last season, the Reds went down 4-1, so could the Tigers be tamed this time around? Uh, well, the short answer is no. A 2-0 defeat to start the season. Worksop made the Reds pay for a lack of cutting edge with two late goals, Tom Denton with the first after a defensive mix-up, Jack Muldoon, which is a great name by the way, with the second just five minutes later. A disappointing day summed up in the final minutes when Captain Dean Stott missed a penalty. Well Roy, you commentated on that game for FCUM Radio, not what you once have spoken about for the first game. Well, interestingly enough, on the way down everybody was talking about where the goals went from, from. and you just alluded to that. Craig Daniels up front on his own and uh, it just didn't work. There's some good performances though, Dean Stott in his uh, usual position, or his position of over 12 months ago, where he's, where he's excellent, and that's uh, just in front of the back four. Uh, the defence played okay, until the two screw-ups by the goalkeeper, but that happened occasionally. But we could have been playing till now, and we wouldn't have scored on that day. So you don't think it was a case of Mike Norton being brought on a little bit too late? And is this one up top? Is it a bit anti FC United? This? Well, I think I, I don't like it, but that's a personal opinion. Uh, Carl's very confident. I think that other players can support the, those guys up front. I don't think it was about Greg Daniels being up front. I don't think if you'd had Greg or Greaves or Norton up front, it would have been any different. I think you need somebody supporting the player up front, and and it, and it didn't clearly didn't work on that day. Um, all right, we could have got a nil-nil out of it if we hadn't have made a mess at the back. But you're going to write me, going to give them one chance, one game, every game. Something's going to happen at the back. Uh, it did on that day, and uh, we lost two nil. Got it afterwards, but it's that thing at the start of the season when you follow FC United. It's different. You don't know what you're going to get. This is what other football supporters have had all their lives. We've not had that. You know roughly with United what you're going to get, don't you? On the first game of the season. With FC United, you don't know. You've got three or four, five new players. You don't know when you're going to win 5 0 or get beat 5 0, to be perfectly honest. But on that day, we were really bad up front, I thought, or disappointing up front. That's Roy's views there, then. Let's hear some of yours. Let's run some final whistle reaction. Well, I thought the first half it was looking quite good. We played some good football. It was knocking it about well. We didn't create a lot of chances, but we went in at half time looking quite comfortable. We've come out second half, we've still had a lot of possession, but we haven't really created a lot of chances and it looks like that's where we've really gone down a bit today. Up front, it's just not happened for us. Well, that was the end of the first game, a bit disappointing really, because um, we didn't get it till halfway through and apparently they played really well in the first half, but we just didn't get a goal. Anyway, we just lost 2-0. Uh, fantastic in terms of possession, you, can, you know, it doesn't get much better than that, but we just need a, someone up front, well, a striker, to just finish. Uh, they came on towards the end, but it was too far gone then, 2 0 down. It's just not good enough. First match of the season, well, I thought it was going to go a bit better than that. We looked pretty uh, solid with these new players, but then it uh, all went wrong in the second half. Not sure what happened, a bit of a mix for the back. But they look pretty solid, these new guys Brownhill and uh, Davis and Raglan. So, uh, despite the fact that we've lost a couple of players, Carl Rocker over the close season and uh, uh, and one or two others, we, we, look, we look pretty strong. I hope we, we get a better result next week. Crazy as it may sound, I thought we were the better team. Two mistakes uh, brought the goals, and then it became like last season again. It was kick an oof and go up there. I think we lacked a cutting edge up front. I thought we played very well, uh, and I think there's a lot to, to look forward to, trying to be positive and the glass half full at the start of the season. But we've, we've got to start testing the keepers a bit more. We've got, to, we've got to start putting the ball away. We can't keep people out all the time, particularly if we're going to make mistakes. So we're going to concede goals. And if we're not going to score, it's obvious what's going to happen. Uh, fantastic first-half performance. Um, lack of cutting edge up front. 
and we undid it ourselves at the end. A couple of mistakes and showed how important it was to them. But then we just didn't have enough to come back at the end to, to get a result. So not the start FC United wanted from the season opener, but not much time to ponder just what went wrong at Worksop. Just three days later came the first home game of the season and a stern test against the much fancied AFC file. Anyone would think that this operation was run by five people and some old string when I tell you that our commentator is Roy Williamson. And we're on the way. Jerome Wright. Loose ball. And Spinner punches it up in the air. Shot comes in. Oh, off the line. Oh, off the line twice. Spinner, lovely move by Fyle, ball came over, I think it was the number 11 there wasn't it Lloyd who did that, could be wrong, nice ball inside, didn't stop, Norton, Wolfenden, oh was that a save, it was indeed, 40 minutes an absolutely brilliant save there, right, over the years Jerome has done some fine work for us, uh, FC United side down this left hand side in front of us. Oh dear me, that was a shocking pass from Davis. Puts FC in trouble. Well, it went wide, and that would be Lloyd again, I think. Oh, nice turn, Jerome. Well played, Wolfie. Takes it to the right hand side of the box. Checks again. Plays it back. Referee nearly gets in the way. Shot comes in. Ooh, nice shot, nice taken by the keeper, but straight at it. Over the top. Eddie through. Ooh, no. In the box, Norton. Yeah, it's free kick right on the edge of the box. Right on the edge of the box. Thanks. No, it's not. Ooh. Oh, nice play. Chris Worsley, all the way to Greece, shoots, oh unlucky, well what a good move, what a good move. Right, so well worth seven minutes of action that one Swampy. Two games in, no goals. It, very much true, yeah. However, uh, I think the foul game was uh, certainly uh, an entertaining game of football. As a nil-nil goes, um, I think both teams showed the qualities. And uh, I think, um, in all fairness, you're not going to get any better nil-nils than that, to be honest. Really well organised opposition and plenty of chances in the game. Yeah, I think uh, both teams uh, certainly were well organised. Fylde are highly fancied. Uh, this season, uh, they've got a good pedigree. It's got a lot of goals pre-season. I think they've scored somewhere in the region of you know well into double figures uh, coming into that game. So actually, for them not to score, I think it was good from an FC perspective. The lads played well up against good opposition, and if you're going to play against the top teams early in the season, you don't want to get beat for them by them, I should say. And, and we didn't get beat by them, and it could have gone either way really. I think both teams finished the game both satisfied with the draw. And uh, you know, in that respect, um, there's a lot of positives to be taken out of it. So you can look at it in the cold light of day, and it looks like that sort of slow start to the season you don't want. But you think you might look back and think they're a fancy team. These that'll be a well-earned point. Yeah, I think uh, you'd always like to win your home games if you can, uh, and get a, get a point away from home. That's that's a championship-winning team. Not getting beats always very very important early on. You know, we've seen teams already this season that have uh, that are fancied getting beats and getting convincingly beat. Uh, the, the result against Workshop was, uh, was a tough one to take, however we moved on from that and there was good performances so in that respect um, you know, I think the players including the management team were very upbeat in the way they were playing because goals will, goals will come, there's no question about that, there's the quality in the team for that to happen and the way they're playing football it's only a matter of time so certainly uh, not too disappointing. Almost like you know what's coming next, isn't it? <laughs> it is amazing, that, isn't it? So no goals in the opening <laughs> two fixtures then. FC went up against a team who'd experienced the joy of six in 
in Stamford AFC. Mind you, they had conceded seven. So could FC open their goal scoring account? What do you think? Sam Huddett. And who else but Roy Williamson? We're at Gig Lane to find out. Well, welcome everybody to the second home game of the season against Stamford in the Evo State Premier Division. Raglan and Davis up front. Over it comes. And a, yes, a goal! Tom Greaves, the first goal of the season for FC United. And that's after eight and a half minutes in the third game. Lovely corner came over. Tom Greaves, beautiful header, Tom, into the back of the net. And that puts FC United a goal to the good. Well, he's kept it. Nice ball, Jerome. Brownhill goes on the outside. To uh, Wolfie. Yes, that's 2 0. He's onside. Who passed the ball through to Wolfie then? Absolutely brilliant finish from Wolfie. Well, that was a lovely finish, and uh, that's the sort of move that FC have been threatening for the first 20, 20 odd minutes. It's just not quite come off, but it did then. Wolfie scores another goal. Well, this is looking much more healthier. 2 0 lead. Dean Stott, he's having a good game. Jerome right again. Cross Jerome, that's a good one. Is it worse than it? Over it comes. Oh, yes! Oh, yes, Tom Greaves! What a ball from Jerome Wright. And he's back in. An overhead kick, Tom Greaves. Two in a minute, 29 minutes gone. What do you make of that, Sam? It was a fantastic finish, that. And the FC were on a roll. Lovely piece of football, great ball from Jerome. Classic finish from uh, Tom Greaves. Classic overhead. Well, Banks in the mix in midfield. Worsley out to Jerome, been quiet up to now. Great ball, Greaves back post. Oh, what a finish! What a great goal from FC, and what a lovely ball from Jerome now. Great goal, that, and some good football, some good possession football from F from FC. Tom Greaves at the back post makes it 4 0. That's a good ball forward for Jerome Wright. Wallings in the box. Astley Mulholland's made a run. Astley, back post. Walling, yes! Secures it on the second attempt. Knocks it in with his left foot. And some good football again from FC. Some quick movement. Good finish from Matty Wallen at the second attempt. 5 0 after 80 minutes. It's not bad, is it? Ball back in play after a half break. Will Holland needs to turn. Does Wallen and Astley. Somebody needs to stay on side. Wallen. Yes, that's an excellent finish from Walwyn. An absolutely excellent finish. And what a great ball through there from uh, Ashley Mulholland. Uh, symmetry is complete, three in each half. I always like that. Turn there, didn't he, Ashley in midfield? Nobody in front of him. He held there, he held back Walwyn, he didn't go offside. Ball through, took it, left, uh, left of the keeper, hammered it in. And FC United scores six, and that will certainly please Carl. Tom, thanks for talking to us. Good no afternoon's work. Yeah, happy with that. Um, obviously delighted to get the hat trick, but obviously the three points was uh, the main thing today to get to get the ball really rolling. Did you feel under pressure before? Because uh, I know that you know there's Greg Daniels and, and Notes and yourself, and we haven't scored in two games. How, how did it feel going out today? Uh, not not so much. Any more, any more pressure than usual, really. Um, I think it was a good point on Tuesday night. Uh, yeah, probably yeah. should have scored myself. Um, so I was just itching to get to get that goal. Um, but obviously, whoever whoever Margie picks wears the number nine shirt. But obviously, I've, fingers crossed, I'll keep my shirt for the next game. Well, that's it. Into, it's difficult to drop you when you score at it. Yeah, he's stood just there. So. I know. Don't, <laughs> don't say too. We'll ask. We'll ask. We'll ask him. <laughs> Talk us through the overhead kick because that was a good one. It was. Yeah, uh, if I remember rightly, I think it's. I think um, Jerome's put the ball in 
uh, where's his edit it back is that's that right, right yeah and then yeah. yeah it's just come perfectly in my path really so i tried a few of them last season nearly brought my back so it was <laughs> nice right. to uh, nice to uh, finally put one away you do like to score spectacular goals that we have to keep showing don't you? <laughs> yeah definitely yeah definitely i'm not sure that's quite as good as uh, the one last season but it's uh, yeah it was a nice one so a great day for tom greens there right many people's man of the match as well as his hat trick uh, he had a superb game, Tom Grease, fantastic overhead kick, which uh, reminiscent of Dennis Law for us, for all Reds, fantastic. Uh, played really well, and for the first time this season, he got loads of support from, I thought, from particularly the first half from Matty Wolfenden. So I think that was a, a, a big change from the fir first two games. I think certainly, yeah. Um, I mean, if you look at the first goal, uh, absolutely fantastic. Again, we talk about Old School United. Reminiscent of uh, Frank Stapleton, great ball in from the corner, whips the header across, absolutely superb. I uh, don't know what you're laughing about. <laughs> how, many, how many old United players can we bring in? I think <laughs> this, would, this would be the part of the show where it's basically reminiscing. Uh, but no, it was, he was, he, he was, he's, he's, he's a good quality footballer, um, and the goals that he scored. But you're right, it was the supply, the work rate of um, for me, Matty Wolfland in the first 45 minutes was outstanding. The movement yeah. off the ball, um, you know. The whole team gelled on, on a night. Uh, or in all fairness, we're playing against a lesser team, you know, and that's no disrespect to, to Stanford. They were a team of individuals opposed to a team that were working as a unit. A, young, a new team that coming into this division. We played against them last season. I forget. We were beaten by them in the in, in, a, in a cup competition. Uh, but they, they they struggled against FC United. They had quite a lot of players out as well. But the uh, the occasion I think got to them a little bit. But. Super from FC. Just break up this chat. Think of it as reminiscent of Remy Moses, if you will. Does that mean that Tom Greaves should be a starter? Has he really pressed his case then? Um, I think because of the size of the squad this year, I think Carl's going to rotate. And some people have their own opinions in regards to that. Uh, a lot of players, people will say that you start with your best 11 week in, week out. But there's, there's extra games this season. Um, and you know, he proves when he comes on and he plays well, scores goals. Uh, but equally, Daniels, Norton, Wolfenden, uh, Wright, you know, uh, Banks, Warwin, uh, off the bench. You know, they, they can all they can all score goals. You know, so in that respect, you've got to keep. Not, you're not keeping them happy for the, for the sake of keeping players happy. I think he's bringing players in as and when uh, he needs to. And let's not forget, Remy Moses' son actually played for FC United. There so we are. again, Sunji was there. He's at Hyde now, playing playing his trade in the division above. So uh, keeping that old school United thing going. Join us. Conversation. Raglan and Davis at centre half and the sort of new look defence, that's quite promising. It's another clean sheet there. I think they're looking pretty good actually. I mean, you can't go through a season with two players at centre back. You've got to have other, other players in to step in. They're going to get suspended, they're going to get uh, injured probably. We've got Adam Jones to come back, so let's not forget Adam. Yeah, Hopefully, he'll be well. back between October and Christmas time. Uh, Pearson, yeah, he can play in the centre as well. But it's been a great start by those two lads. Really impressed with them. And as I understand it, Tom Davis uh, is a pretty good midfield player as well. So, well, plenty, yeah. plenty of options there. Well, he was at uh, Northumbria uh, College and he played for Team Northumbria in the Northern League, and uh, I think he scored around 30 goals, primarily said from, from set pieces, uh, headers. Uh, but he's not shy of taking the ball forward. And I think one thing that we've got early part of the season is we've got two lads in the middle with uh, youth and pace. And I think that's really shown because they're, they're not scared of bringing the ball out. So, I mean, He's a good quality footballer, and they both are. And together with the Lee Neville and with uh, Brownell, who has been superb since he's joined us, because that's probably the hardest position to fill, I think, this season. Your club captain has left, undoubtedly the best player in the league last season, um, got into the, the all 11, and uh, filling them boots has been difficult, but very, very good start from the back four. Still one more game to deal with then, but let's now turn to matters off the pitch. Construction's nearly underway on FC United's new home, a 5,000 capacity ground in Moston, North Manchester. Grand Designs were not interested in contributing to this. Seriously, Walsh even asked them. So here is our very own version of Kevin McLeod in the shape of Marv Willis. Adam, thank you very much for joining us today. No problem. So this is very exciting, right? Uh, yes, yes, we're uh, getting to the brink of actually doing this thing. Oh, well, I think that's the question. What is the brink? What, what, what are we about to? Ha what's about to happen here? Well, there's been, as you know, there's been a long process of, of, of planning, going through the judicial review, going through the appeals process for that, and then it's been a process of confirming all the documentation that has to sit behind. That's not just the plans and uh, the contractors, but the, also the funding and cost side of it. So there's been a lot of work over the last month, confirming the final costs for the project, and 
confirming that we've got the funding in place to meet those costs. Um, I can't go into too much detail today about that, but we can in a in a future um, future show. That's right. We appreciate the secrecy of the whole thing. It's exciting. But but you know it's 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 been progressing very well the last couple of weeks. So we're hoping to make an announcement very shortly about when we can actually get started on on the build. This process has been in the making for years, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, I mean, we've been talking to the city council about it since 2007. Uh, obviously, there was the Ten Acres Lane project before that, but um, you know, even since since 2011, it's been a long process getting this through, making sure that we're meeting all the community ob objectives that we need to meet with the site, and uh, that we're satisfying everybody that we're going to do what we say we're going to do. There's still a lot of work for members and supporters to do because we still need to raise somewhere in the region of 300k uh, ourselves as part of the funding package. Um, we've always said there'll be an amount to raise during the build and we'll be providing details of that shortly. Fantastic. And they, these are the, the main gates behind us here to the Ronald Johnson playing fields. Is, can you tell us exactly what's going to be here? This will be somewhere at the edge of the main stand, I think, just around <laughs> looking around. So the main stand will be along this side. Terrace end will be down this end of the, of the field and the north and, north and uh, west stands on the far side will be flat standing. So this will be the main stand car park and so on will be all the way around here and then the community pitches behind where I'm standing. And most importantly the bar? Uh, the bar, bar will be part of the main stand. Good, as long as that's been thought through. It's also a space that can be used through the week um, in a flexible way by the community. You can divide it into three different spaces, it can be used for meetings, club meetings and all the rest of it. So uh, yeah, it's an important part of it as well Brilliant. as selling beer. Absolutely. Well, congratulations. I'm sure it's been a long, hard process in the make, and really congratulations on getting it this far. A lot of work to go, like you say, but hopefully we'll be able to speak to each other again in the forthcoming months. Certainly will. Excellent. Thank you, Adam. Cheers. Cheers. So, who knows what the future holds? Nobody, except for Adam Brown. This has been Marv Willers down on the Ronald Johnson playing fields here in Moston. Right, so are the commentary positions going to be near the bar or not? I'm not clear from that. Well, I'm expecting a rickety ladder to get up because, you know, it wouldn't be sat there for me, would it? Otherwise. Northwest counties. That's when the rickety ladder came out and it was... Uh, it was no, 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 we climb it every... You, you're down, downstairs in the comfort, comfortable bit. The comfortable we have to climb we're down there every young gate, remember? We're only down there because of Ben, who doesn't like, doesn't like heights, but I'm hoping that we have uh, two sets of ladders, probably 150 foot, just for him. Um, and to answer your question, doesn't matter where we are, as long as we've got a decent vantage point and we can watch a game of football, uh, you know, that's going to be uh, quite nice. What was also going to be quite nice is when we keep going back every month to Moston to see how it's going to be progressing. Like, don't miss that. I think month two is going to be um, an industrial dispute about um, a builder showing too much of his anus. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we all can get sorted out by Christmas. That's all right, month, month three will be newts. What? There'll be newts in month three. November's going to be a great one. There's already a shot lined up of uh, some sand going around in one of those things. That's, that's going to be my favourite by a mile. Back to the action then. On Bank Holiday Monday, FC took the short trip to Shoreview, home of the newly promoted Trafford FC. And Swampy, this was very much the classic. It was indeed. Um, I think from a neutral perspective, we've turned up as many, many people did. It was, I think, the largest crowd they've ever had, I think, 1,324, something in that region, uh, came to watch the game. Lots of United fans had come out to watch the game because obviously United were playing that, that evening. Uh, but what a game of football. Uh, two teams, very similar in the way they set themselves up. Obviously, Carl and Vaughan, very, very good friends. And um, a terrific game of football to watch. I'm certain to commentate on it. It was end-to-end uh, -end stuff for, uh, for 94 minutes. And Warwin on Greaves on target again. Yeah, that's right. I mean, the changes came. I mean, the, you know, the game ebbed and flowed. And uh, when he made the changes, FC United 2-1 down and uh, Warwin came on and he, he just basically got the ball and he just ran with it, you know, and uh, used his pace and his quality. And uh, in all fairness, he hadn't seen a great deal of that yet because he's not been with us long enough. He hasn't really played a great deal of football for us, but what he showed was uh, that never die attitude uh, on one day and uh, he scored a terrific goal. I think the goalkeeper Oaks perhaps should have done a little bit better, um, but I think he was undecided whether the ball should be played across and uh, he took that gamble and he drilled it and uh, it went on his near post and a great goal. And as you say, that man again, Tom Greaves, absolutely superb, you know, uh, gets the ball. As I say, he, he, he can see he's been around for a number of years and he's played you know, a decent level because the goal that he scored, again, was a tremendous, tremendous goal. It's always good to get a stoppage time winner, but it's always good as well to come from behind and show that character. 
Uh, yeah, I like these cliches. These are really good uh, in football terms. Well, you right, wish yeah. the scene wrote this whole script. <laughs> it is, it is. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the game could have gone either way. We could have been 3-1 down. There was a great save from uh, Spencer. Um, and then uh, there was a, a clearance off the line. Substitute for, uh, for Trafford. Uh, overhead scissor kick off the crossbar. You know, so it could have been three or four one before we actually got that equalising goal, and then to win it in the ninety first minute, you know, the, the 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 crowd, you can see, you know, the way the way they reacted, the way the players reacted. I think I think four of the players were actually in the crowd for about thirty five seconds after uh, kick off had started again, and had to run back on the pitch. But a great, great day, great advert for non league football as well. You know, that's the way it should be played. All fans mingling, really enjoying themselves. Terrific advert for the game. Fantastic. Cliché central. Let's see if the supporters agree with you. And I mean actual supporters, Swampy, not people who blag their way into a ground just holding a microphone. Start again on top of the start, first start, but really good performance by FC at the end of the second half. Well done, lads. FC United, never boring. Listen to this guy. I'd have settled for a draw, I think, at, uh, at one point, but uh, we did it again. Pulled it out of the house again and uh, quite happy with that. Wasn't quite the same as Saturday, but uh, I settled for three points. I couldn't believe we came back from 2-1 down. I mean, we were 1-0 up and we were looking a little bit frosty. They had a good chance and when they went 2-1 up, I thought that's the state of the game. I couldn't believe when we came back, when we got two goals in the end. Absolutely Brilliant. 3 2 to FC United, 2 1 down, two substitutes on. The manager brings a couple of guys on, and they both win as the match. What a match, though. What, a, what an advert, not just at this level, at any level. You can't, you can't get better than that, really. Fantastic result. So, four matches played, all dealt with in this, the first edition of Bring Your Own Ball. Two wins, one draw. One defeat. Here's the gap for Carl Marginson. Okay, Carl, we're uh, four games in. What's your assessment of the season so far? I think it's been fantastic. We've, um, the football we've played has been very pleasing. Um, obviously, the, the disappointment result of uh, works up, but being realistic, it's a, a game where we should have probably taken at least a point um, when chances created. Um, but the, the, the most pleasing thing is, is the way that we have been playing. Um, you know, we've added goals to it. I know people were, were fretting about that a little bit, but we have, we've got, yeah. the, the, as I told many people in the past, we've got strike power there. The, we can get goals from all over the show. Um, you know, so that's pleasing. Um, and it, as a squad, just just the way that the lads have responded to the challenges that we've set and the way that they've um, behaved, um, even in disappointment. Um, you know, the players who haven't. Um, featured probably as much as they would like, um, have been really understanding and, and have shown the right kind of attitude. Yeah, I mean we brought new players in as well to supplement the squad that we had last year, haven't we? We've, we've talked about uh, Liam Brownell, Tom Davis, Charlie Raglan, Chris Worsley, Cavill Koo. I'd be interested to know just how you get those players to the club. Charlie Raglan, um, obviously he was the first one and he came to Germany with us. Um, it's basically using my contacts and um, the scouting network that we've put in place now. I had a phone call off an old manager of mine who was, was telling me about Charlie's predicament at, at Nantwich. Um, you know, and, and just speaking to him um, on the phone, inviting him to Germany, I could tell straight away that he wanted to join the club for, for the right reasons. Tom Davis was was an absolute peach of a find, really. The, uh, he emailed the club. He'd been playing at right. Northumbria University and was asking for a trial. It was more a case of um, checking Tom out um, because university football, I was a little bit unsure, obviously, involved with the college. Um, and no, it can be a decent standard, but there's lots of flaws in it. Um, but once I found out that Northumbria University were, were actually playing the Northern League, um, I think he scored something like 20, 28 goals in, in two seasons. Right, that's a good league, yeah. Yeah. 
and uh, he, was, he was captain of, of them. Um, you know, straight away I picked the phone up and, and got him down to training, pre-season training. And obviously, once you, 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 your eyes don't lie, do you? So <laughs> actually seeing him um, just in the first training session, his movement, um, just the way that he moved, not really for the centre half, only great movement. Um, but the way that he moved was very impressive. Yeah. He could obviously play football and his his communication on the pitch was first class. So um, you know that's that's one of them that fall in your lap. There's not a great deal of hard work. Um, so that, that was Tom. Um, Liam Brownhill, again contacts, but you sometimes you end up you, your players are sometimes your best scouts. Jerome Wright said that he was he was out looking for a club. I'd been looking at right backs. Um, I'd already been in contact with, with a couple of lads, but once Liam um, expressed an interest to come down and talk about negotiations, all these lads, it's probably taken me about 15 seconds. Okay, right. Because yeah. um, they want to play for the club, and I think that's a really important part yeah, sure of, of, of what we're looking for within a player. I think you see that by um, the spirit that they've showed. I was looking on, on Monday when we scored the winning goal. And I, I keep quite calm myself, um, I turn around to get a drink of water as I do, and uh, the bench was just empty. All uh, together, you know, and that, that's a, a, a real strength that we, that we have. Um, Carol Q was one, a, a right back that had, had um, spoken to a couple of scouts about. He's always impressed when we played against Mosley, um, and then a couple of lads knew him, uh, Adam Jones and Mike Norton played with him at, um, at Kurz and Ashton. Um, and they, you know, some of his praises and um, again another great addition to the squad. Andy Pearson. Yeah, and Andy um, Andy came towards the end of pre season. I've known Andy for a, a number of years, just from afar really, I know his dad. Um, and when I was at Flexton he used to go in, into the Flexton clubhouse and um, he, was a lad, he, he was a player at, at Wigan Athletic as a youngster when I was alone. I think he actually played for Rodri um, at, at Salford. Um, ended up finding his way to Hyde where I saw him play and really with a, more of an objective eye rather than just an interested yeah. bystander and he was excellent, absolutely superb and I couldn't believe that um, you know, a player of his quality was, was, was coming available. Chris Worsley, absolute no-brainer, you know the standards of the, 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 where, where, Chris, where Chris has played. Um, and the things that he's achieved, I think it's important. I look at our squad and I'm going to have a look at how many champions we have. Um, and we've got a damn sight more now than we ever had before. Right, okay. That, when, yeah. we, when we move into you know, the latter part of the season and maybe looking at you know, crunch games, then champions will shine through because they've been there before. Um, that's something that you can't teach anybody. You've got to experience that yourself and know um, what, what's going to be expected to, to come through and try on that front. And, and, and the game at Trafford showed that, didn't it? The yeah. never say die stuff. Yeah. I know it's a cliche, but play right to the end. And, yeah, that, and that's it, comes. it. You know, and I think that po that's possibly, I don't think we've seen a comeback like we did at Trafford for a couple of years now. Good additions all around, really. For yeah, the, I think so. You know, the, the club. I know, um, obviously, at the end of last season, there was, there was three very, very, very popular players um, who left the club. Um, and I said at the time, my job then to, to try and strengthen and to be honest I, I think I've done the job on that front. Well as I say it's been a good start to the season so far I can best of luck for the rest of it. Cheers Ryan. Thanks okay. very much. Cheers. Man. Thanks a lot. Alright, that's the manager's views then. Look into September now, gentlemen, if I can call you that, and let's be honest, the script obliges me to talk to me <laughs> about the FA Cup match with Chorley at Gig Lane on the 14th. Well we've had so much Good times, so many good times, so much fun in the FA Cup. It would be heartbreaking to go out at the first stage because we've not actually done that. So I think they've thrown us uh, a pretty difficult time, to be perfectly honest. Um, but I desperately want us to get through it. Uh, it won't be easy, but it's a home tie. We look to October, November for cup games, don't we? So Yeah. Know. It's. I mean, the FA Cup is. It's. It's what it's all about, isn't it? And uh, you know, for many a year, uh, we just didn't quite get there, and then we, we got into the habit, and we enjoy sort of like the uh, the bar scarf twirl, and uh, that that sort of like raw atmosphere of an FA Cup, and against Chorley it'll be fantastic. It's. Uh, it's a shame in, in some respects that uh, we won't play against Carlos Rocker because 
he's decided to uh, to retire from football at age 28. But we've still got Jake Cottrell there. We've still got uh, uh, Sam Ashton to come up again. So uh, yeah. some old, old FC uh, players there, which will be good. It'll be a good game of football. And what it'll do as well, it'll set the stall for the rest of the season in regards to playing against the likes of Chorley because they're going to be up there at the end of the season. They've got a very good squad. Gary Flipflop, really, really, <laughs> really uh, decent guy, good manager. Uh, you know, so he'll be relishing it. And these are the kind of games that you want. You know, you, you want to come up against good quality opposition. Well, also, also the thing about Chorley is they'll bring a few. So yeah. it'll be a great atmosphere, uh, which is something else to look forward to, isn't it? And what you should have in an FA Cup tie. So, yeah, really looking forward to that game. And I think most people are. It, it's, the pick of the, it's the pick of the month, I suppose, in September. Uh, but we also have to look forward to another old uh, old school FC United reunion with uh, we're playing FC United of New Mills I think on the 24th in the Manchester Premier Cup so again that's going to be an intri- intriguing one because I think there's about 14 ex FC United yeah. players and <laughs> management there so you know it's going to be an interesting tie as well that. so lots to look forward to Good, and a nice break after that game for about 10 or 11 days as well and that brings us to the end of our first ever show we hope you enjoyed it even more than we did. Big thanks to Roy for joining us in the studio and to Swampy, red and green, seldom seen, and now we know why. (laughs) And I feel confident when I say we've engaged in what the kids are now calling classic NPL bants, and I'm spelling that with a hashtag. We're back at the end of September to bring you all the action from the second month of the season. In the meantime, please do follow us at hashtag central, that's on Twitter. Just go to at SCUMTV. From everyone here at Bring Your Own Ball, ta-da for now, see you later.